My name is Mike Lindsay. I am a Cherokee storyteller. I have uh, Cherokee ancestry on my mother's side and mixed with uh, English. And on my birth father's side, uh, Cherokee and German. Okay, so let's talk about Native Cherokees and where they fit into the Native American world. Well, um, our, our world, our, our land base was centered uh, in the eastern part of the United States, the first real barrier that you come to when you come from the east, you come to the Appalachian Mountains and our particular southern end of that were the, known as the Smoky Mountains, or it still are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we occupied about eight states around that area okay. uh, originally. Um, we were one of some 500 nations or yeah. tribes found in the current boundaries of the United States of America. Some of which ha have uh, names that generally people know just from other things like right. Navajo and uh, I don't know. So there's plenty of... Sioux or right. Lakota, Apache. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of from famous from movies and so forth. A lot of the tribes, um, there, there are quite a few who don't really have any existence anymore. Uh, right. And in many cases, some of those small groups never even met a white person, uh, but diseases ran. When the Europeans came, they brought a lot of uh, right. different diseases that the people here had no immunity to. Mm -hmm. And so... So the um, disease actually preceded the arrival of the Europeans in some cases. Exactly, so because it spread through trade goods and so mm -hmm. forth, and just through contact from, with, with other people. And uh, so... It, so we'll never know. We'll never know. There's probably some languages that are missing. There's probably, right. I mean, there not probably there are, and there are many, you know, different peoples and their their stories and their histories. Mm -hmm. um, but even so, uh, there's there's quite a, a rich cultural legacy, okay. um, and it's had quite an influence on the America that we live in today. Okay. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about that. Um, what what do you think we have today, or what, what what do you think we would see in today's general American culture that might have Native American roots to it? Well, you can talk about very basic things like food. Mm -hmm. um, Eighty percent of the vegetables and fruits that people eat today were cultivated here in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. including such uh, popular items as tomatoes, uh, potatoes, potatoes, mm -hmm. corn, of course, very mm -hmm. famously, uh, mm -hmm. certain beans, and on and on and on. Yeah. Um, I think, particularly with the, in the, the case of uh, the, in America, um, the way people view government and freedom Mm -hmm. were influenced a lot by what the uh, colonists and the, and the explorers who came here saw okay. when they first came here. So they came here, yeah, these early colonists came here from these uh, kingdoms in Europe, Right. this very hierarchical, top-down uh, structure. Exactly. And then they came to the New World and they met the natives. And uh, yeah, so what, how, how did that affect them, their system of organizing or government? Well, I think the first thing was just uh, a realization that there was there might be a different way to organize yourself. You don't have to have a strong man, a king, mm -hmm. uh, something like this. That that, in a sense, this concept of a <clears throat> of a individual sovereignty or a sovereignty of a of a human being, right? Um, and that in itself, and then uh, and of course with variations among the different tribes and nations, but. Uh, you know, organizing on what we would now consider more democratic lines, and even then, the individual kind of having veto power even over the group. Uh, mm -hmm. In certain cases, for example, in in the case of uh, warfare, yeah. uh, you know, uh, if the group decided, uh, or if a, let's say a, a chief decided, a war chief said, you know, th there's been this transgression from our neighbors, we need to go and fight them, and then he'd turn around and walk away and you know, whoever followed him would be part of that fight, and whoever didn't feel it was worth the risk or the 
the effort would right. not, and there was no um, sanction on that. There mm -hmm. was no. Uh, there was a lot shame. of yeah, a lot of respect for individual decision making and right. And, and then more, more. You know, we get to the Iroquois people, who are the classic, the Iroquois Confederacy, very famous in New York State. Yeah. Five nations which had been at war, sometime in the distant. Uh, right, with the French and Indian Wars and that kind of stuff. Oh no, even before that, oh. they were at war with each other. They were even oh, though I they see, were related. Right. Right. And then they, the prophet came to them named Gunawida, the the otherwise known as the peacemaker, and he brought basically he brought these uh, this set of laws and teaching called the Great Law of Peace, and they organized their government, the, the Iroquois Confederacy, based on this. And so they had certain principles, like they had th that American people who've studied American government find familiar, like. Um, Two two houses of uh, uh, kind of a council, two two councils to to govern the nation oh, right. uh, with representative uh, mm -hmm. representatives, which we have now in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Exactly, Congress, they had yeah. um, something very simple, but um, very different from, for example, let's say England. Uh, there was the the principle that in council, when when people were together. Uh, to make decisions for the for the society for the nation, only one person would speak at a time. They mm. would, as we say now, have the floor. Right. And even still, you know, I think uh, Americans or even the Native people, when we see CNN, we see a Parliament and stuff, and everybody talking at once. It 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 just seems obvious. It's interesting how that was transmitted because as a young man. George Washington was a surveyor in Iroquois country, mm. and uh, that was part of his uh, his job. And then uh, Benjamin Franklin, also was a young man at that time, uh, he uh, was a printer, as we know, but he was commissioned by the Iroquois Confederacy, by the Iroquois government, to uh, print the proceedings, the to keep uh, the proceedings of their council meetings. So these two very influential Founding, Founding fathers, fathers right, if you will, right, yeah, right. Uh, were exposed <clears throat> intimately and mm -hmm. day in and day out to, right, to a, right. the Iroquois government, and even there's some quote, you know, quoted writings where, uh, when when uh, the Declaration of Independence came and so forth, and people. Uh, people like Washington and other founding fathers were trying to convince others to join their cause. You know, there was this, the, the sayings like, uh, I think it's even in the Declaration of Independence, uh, something like this to this effect. Well, if these savages can organize themselves to govern themselves, surely we can. <laughs> uh, so um, a lot of that, you know, of course, there have been books written about that, but in the general education of people, uh, it's not credited. Now, there, there are many other things that that maybe are not so, uh, they're a little more philosophical and so forth, but I think mm -hmm. this basis of that self, they saw a model, the Europeans saw a model, even back before the English, when the, the French uh, trappers and traders, mm -hmm. uh, they would write letters home and describe these Indian or native um, societies they were encountering, and you know, people like uh, Voltaire, Rousseau, read these things, and, and it became suddenly a, poss a different way that people mm -hmm. can govern themselves. Right, right. Kind of enlightened to a different way that nobody had thought about in, in that world. And, you know, and, and sometimes that's all that's necessary. Uh, right. You Just know, just a possibility. Yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting because uh, I relate that to modern times where uh, I, I remember reading, I've read in several places recently where some of the science fiction, Star Trek and so forth, inspired some of the creators of these kind of new technologies that we have now they saw right. you know so it's sure. i think it's that kind of that the guy who invented the cell phone uh, you know got it from star trek right, right? exactly right. but i mean even to look in that direction so i think there might yeah. be some of that effect. it's a, a, a lot, that's that's just testament to having an open mind exactly and it's a, it's a testament to these or you know george washington and, yeah. and franklin for having the open mindedness enough to do that and i think yeah. the willingness to to move among these people and to mingle with them uh, for purpose other than just fighting, right? Right. right but right. to actually live among and and, and that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and 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 it also says uh, uh, it's kind of a plug for intercultural competence, at least mm -hmm. to try to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to uh, completely accept another culture, the, all their ways, and so forth, but at least to try to understand what they're doing and why. You know. So I think that's interesting.